Welcome to part three of the shed project. In the last episode, I made the floor and in this one, I'll be working on making the walls. I picked up some lengths of 47 mm square or two by two tantalized timber for this from my local timber merchants. Before I get started building, I thought I should talk briefly about how I designed the shed and how we want it to fit in with the surroundings. It's going to have a sloped roof and that's because as we look out from the house, we want to see as much of the sky and as little of the shed as possible. The large conifer hedge which sits next to where the shed will be hides most of it from view anyway, but choosing a sloped roof was just a subtle way to hide it from view even more. The long wall of the shed that sits next to the hedge is just going to be a plain wall, as is the short wall at the back which will be next to this fence. The long wall that faces the fields is going to have four windows in it to let the light in. I'm not too worried about security here as A, we're not going to keep anything valuable in the shed and B, there's no footfall past our garden anyway. And the front short wall will have a central doorway which is going to be quite large just to make it easier to get things like the lawnmower in and out of the shed. So it's a pretty simple design really but one which will work well for us. I'm going to start by building the frame for the long plain wall and here I'm marking up the length of the uprights based on the dimensions from my drawing. And before I make the cuts I'm lining up all of the ends flush so that I can cut them all to length at the same time using my circular saw and a speed square to guide the cut. I'm going to make sure that I place these freshly cut ends at the top of the frame where moisture ingress is much less likely to be a problem as the uncut ends will have soaked up more preservative treatment so they'll be better off at the bottom of the frame. And I'm butting the uprights up to a long 3.6 meter length of the same timber which doesn't need any cuts made as 3.6 meters will be the length of my shed. And to make sure that the wall frame is assembled square I can position the timber using the floor as a point of reference. And then I fired in a couple of 90mm framing nails to secure the uprights in place. Next I can get the top plate in position and using this shed base as a workbench is really useful as I know that it's flat enough and square enough to help frame the walls. And then I can measure up the distance between the two end uprights and that measurement is 3506mm and there are going to be five of the 47mm wide uprights which totals 235mm so I deduct that which gives 3271mm and if I divide that by the number of gaps in between the uprights which is six in this case that gives me 545mm which will be the distance between them. So using some of the offcuts from the uprights, I'm going to cut two spacer blocks at 545 millimeters in length that I can use to help position each of the uprights spaced apart equally. I can reuse those spacers as noggins to help keep the wall nice and rigid. And I cut some more so that I can add them all of the way along the wall, staggering them to allow easy access for the screws to go in. By the way, the only reason I'm using screws here instead of the 90mm nails that I was using is because I ran out of nails at this point, so I'm just using what I had available, which are these 80mm wood screws. These will be fine for this application as they're not going to see much moisture, although coated decking screws would have probably been a better option, I just didn't have any to hand. When I got to the last section of the wall, the noggins were a fraction too long, so I shaved off about half a millimetre or so with the circular saw. So I just went to lift up this wall and move it out of the way so I could get started on the next one and it seems to be nailed to the floor so I can only assume that one of the nails I fired into the end has gone into the OSB so I'm going to use a crowbar to try and lift it now. Hopefully it doesn't do too much damage. Looks like it's happened in two places. doesn't appear to have done too much damage so not a problem. I'm not sure if I wasn't firing in the nails straight enough or if maybe those nails hit a knot in the wood and bent out of shape but no harm done I just used an angle grinder to grind away the rest of the nail and I can use this face of the wall as the outside face which will get covered in cladding so no one will ever see the damage. Apologies for the loss of audio here by the way unfortunately the microphone wasn't plugged in properly. 
For framing the short walls, I'd use some 2.4 meter lengths for the top and bottom plates because 2.4 meters would be the width of the shed, but I needed to trim away the thickness of the timber times two to account for where the short walls will butt up against the long walls, if that makes sense. So I'm using a couple of offcuts of the same timber to mark them up before cutting them to length. And this wall was assembled in exactly the same way as the first. A few lengths of the timber that I had were twisted and warped out of shape as they had a few days drying out in the sun, but fortunately I ordered a few extra lengths just in case that happened, so I could use these twisted pieces to cut into shorter pieces and use them as noggins. By the way, I'm adding two screws through into one end of each of the noggins, and that just stops it being able to twist around. Then I made the short wall with the doorway in the centre, and one thing to note here is that I'm not cutting the uprights to length yet, there is a reason for that which I'll cover later on. And finally I could then make the high, long wall which will have the windows fitted. I struggle here to find enough good straight timber to make the wall, so here you'll see I'm using a few clamps to force the timber back straight. Because my clamps were not long enough to pull the full length of the wall in tight, I used two clamps pulling against each other. and then I can add screws to secure it. For the windows here, I'm going to be using some of this eight millimeter thick salvaged perspex. I got these bits from a skip. They used to be part of an old library display stand, and this was the perfect opportunity to make use of them. You'll see that they do have these little notches in the side, but that doesn't really matter to me. These were almost the perfect size, however I did just need to make one cut to each piece so that they would meet together on the centre of each joist. And then I can make a mark where to add noggins to support the bottom of the perspex. I drilled pilot holes and then I can secure the perspex to the inside of the frame with plenty of screws and some brass washers. With all of the perspex added, I could then lift up the wall, allowing me to get access to add the final noggins. And I secured those in place just by toenailing in the screws from underneath. At this point we had a few days of rain, so I covered up the shed base as best I could with a piece of damp proof coarse plastic that I had laying around. I didn't want to assemble the walls until there were a good few days of good weather forecasted because I wanted to try and get the shed watertight in that time, which would mean getting the cladding on which I'd just recently had delivered, and obviously getting a roof on too. A few days later we had four days of good weather forecasted, so it seemed like a good opportunity to get on with it. I just had to hope that those forecasts were right. Spoiler alert, they were not. But anyway, first I needed to get the walls put in place and it'd be useful to have two people to do this, but I made do with a couple of F clamps holding this long wall to the shed base while I positioned the short wall at the back. And see if you can spot the upcoming mistake here, which I'll talk about shortly. I secured the corners with more 80 mm screws using about five from top to bottom. Then I could bring in the short wall with the door opening And at this point the clamps had done their job and the frame wasn't really going anywhere so I could take them off. I made sure that the frame was flush with the edges of the floor and then I can secure the bottom plates of each wall panel through the OSB and into the floor joists beneath. So did you spot the mistake? I left the long wall with windows until last and now there wasn't enough space to bring it around and fit it because of the piles of shiplap cladding that were in the way, which I really didn't want to have to move. What an idiot. I have an annoying habit of not thinking ahead properly sometimes. I asked Rhea to help to see if we could manoeuvre and twist the wall up and over the pile of shiplap, but then someone knocked on our front door with a delivery so Rhea went to see to that and I admitted defeat and unscrewed the back wall so that I could swing the longer wall in place. Sorted. Next I needed to cut those uprights in the short wall to length, so first I offered up a straightish piece of wood that I can use as the top plate, and I clamped it in place. And I can then draw some marks on the underside. Then I removed it and then I can cut them not only to length but also at the right angle to support the top piece.
Before I added that though, I wanted to get a top for the door frame in place just to make sure that the door frame would remain true and square. So here I'm marking up a piece of timber for the width of the door opening, which I can then cut to length. I offer it up to make sure it's accurate enough and it seemed fine. So then I get it held in place and secure it with screws on one side. Before securing the other side, I marked up the height of the door on another piece of timber and cut that to length. And that allowed me to get the height of the door frame accurate and consistent on both sides before securing the door frame top plate. Next I can get the top plate of the wall offered up and I'm using a speed square here so that I can mark up the angle that needs cutting. I do that on each side and then I can finally fix it in place. I followed the same process with the back short wall too, the one without the door, so marking and cutting the uprights to length and then fitting a top plate. That's the wall framing completed and at the moment it's not the most stable structure. There's a bit of wobble to it, but when all of the cladding goes on, which is what the next video is going to be focused on, that's what is going to make everything nice and rigid. If you have any questions about this project, please leave them in the comments section below as I'm thinking of doing a Q&A video where I can answer them all later in the series. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can do that via Patreon or PayPal. Links to both are in the description box below. And on Patreon, you can also get early access to my videos, including for this series, some exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.